Let's go back three years to be exact and go back to 2010 because we've seen this sort of trend the past few years where we rally at the beginning of the year and then we come right on down. It either happens sort of in late spring or going into summer. Happened in 2010. If you look at what happened in 2011, it was a similar trajectory, although it happened later. And then also, if you go even into 2012, we saw it. And even though stocks then recovered later in the year, there was that sort of come up and then come down. Why did that happen? Well, there were a number of factors outside of the U.S., in particular coming from Europe. There were also political risks. And so all of that sort of surprised investors or surprised them enough to bring stocks down. In addition to that, Going into the summer months, you tend to have a little bit of a lull in earnings in terms of the strength of earnings and that seasonality also taking stocks down to some extent. So the question is now when we look at the S&P 500 with this 10 percent run for the year to date, what happens now? Well, one thing I want to know, which we've noted before, is that if we kept going up at the same pace at which we've been going up, Guess what? We'd be up 50 percent for the year and we'd be up uh, above 2100 on the S&P 500. No strategist out there thinks that that's going to happen. And indeed, the average of the Wall Street strategists we survey find that the S&P is going to end the year at 1583, which is not that far above where we are today, less than 20 points higher. Also, if you go into the more immediate future, you can look to April, which tends no to be the best month for stocks, according to Bespoke Investment Group, which tends to look back. At, uh, at what we've seen historically. So if you look at the Dow Jones Industrials going over the past 100 years in April, you see a gain of 1.3%. If you go over the last 50 years, you see a gain of 2.2%. And the last 20 years, you see the biggest gain of 2.7%. So April does tend to be strong for stocks. You always have to offer the caveat, right, that past performance is no guarantee of future results. But historically, this is what we have seen. In talking to strategists extensively over the past couple of weeks about this coming record, I was talking to them about how significant is it and what happens next. And almost all of them said, yes, this stuff is interesting. We're hitting records. This is what we see historically. But all of them, no matter which side they come out on in terms of bull or bear, say you have to look back at the fundamentals of what's happening with the U.S. economy and also any risks potentially from Europe, Trish.